Uh, then I think. Okay. Thank you. I'm listening to me. I'm sorry I'm quiet. I've got a soft voice. That didn't work for the usual. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got a cold, so I'm even worse than usual. Um, I guess I'll start by backgrounding my um, practice. I grew up in the country. Um, part of things like in a family that like made everything themselves. It was pretty self-sufficient kind of upbringing. We grew our own vegetables, we grew our own meat, we made my dad build our house. Um, my mother made all of our clothing. Um, I was one of those children at school that looked homeschooled <laughs> at school. So I have a very um, solid grounding in making things and making all sorts of things. From clothes, I was making my own clothes in primary school and um, I built screens to screen print my own t-shirts for, fa- for my family from the time I was like 10 years old. So I kind of have a habit of trying to work out how to do something and just do it, just as an interest I guess. And so. Coming here is exciting for me because I've always been interested in this kind of process and I admire the dedication and skill that's involved in becoming an amazing weaver but I also just want to know a little bit about it by joining a process. Um, I like to understand the process by doing it and I certainly will never become an expert at anything because I have a very short attention span. <laughs> but I do like to have a bit of knowledge, a hands-on knowledge of um, different processes and I really love using different processes. Um, so throughout my um, schooling I was always into drawing and I think it's just Um, So I was always into art, drawing, photography. I realised when I was in high school that you could go to art school and went, oh, hang on, that sounds great. (laughs) I'm totally forgetting all my maths and physics and I'm just going to pass English and get into art school. (laughs) And I did. (laughs) So I studied printmaking and drawing in art school and that's all I'm talking about now and I did that in North Queensland. And I sort of hovered around the printmaking department because I already loved screen printing and I loved posters and a camera and I made a lot of posters and I printed a lot of fabric in my own time but at art school I kind of went into making books and posters and things like that. Then I finished art school and moved to Melbourne. How far north of Northern Queensland were you? Um, on the Athena Cayman, so just in my different kids. Okay. Yeah. So um, it felt like the end of the year. Uh, or everywhere I've ever been, I felt like I've been. Like, so you from know, you <laughs> know Rosella Nanok and all those? Um, I do. Uh, she was just Nanok went to school with me. I was going to say, did you go? Yeah. yeah. Well, we've done one of each other's trips. That's exciting. And I think growing up in a community, we had a lot of, um, my family had close ties with a lot of Aboriginal youth. They did And my, and there's a huge community of Papua New Guinea, um, Pacific Islanders. There's a really interesting kind of mix of folk traditions that I've always been really interested in, from the weaving to the clothing and the masks, so the cultural. I, lo- I love, in all of its iterations. And I guess growing up around that sort of thing, uh, we had people come to school and teach us how to make baskets, which I feel really lucky now coming to town because there's constantly workshops with people teaching me how to make these things that I've kind of learned from people in my community, which is, I feel lucky. (laughs) Anyway, um, so after art school, I moved to Melbourne and I. I guess I kind of wanted to do something here and I ended up studying animation. I feel like it was a bit of a whim, but I got into a really good course and I did the study and I I have a good grounding in all sorts of like two-dimensional animation from hand-drawn, cell-by-cell, frame-by-frame, tedious animation to 
stop motion animation to computer, 3D computer animation. I have a kind of basic understanding of 3D computer animation, but again, I find just knowing about it and I'm not wanting to do it all the time because <laughs> it's tedious and um, slow. And I I like to do lots of things. So once I got out of animation, I actually didn't want to go near a computer at all for a while. So I started making things again with my hands, including printing huge lakes of fabric and sewing them up into sculptural things. And my exhibiting in Melbourne, I, tend, I would say I'm an installation artist. I do have, I tend to fill rooms with stuff. I'm never happy just making one little picture. I always want to print the wall, make a carpet, make a video, put a tick, you know. I want to do everything, and that's kind of what happens. <laughs> I tend to fill the rooms. You should see my house. <laughs> Um, so, I've, I've got a pretty long history now in Melbourne of exhibiting installation art. And I guess I then have kind of slowly got involved in curating shows. And I'm, I guess it's just contextualizing yourself and your love. It's compiling a whole thing, a bunch of things that you think should sit together. And I've done that a bit, both with other people and on my own. Um, I should probably show you something other than the spots, which is not really that no. But I guess that is a bit of a background into what, where I come from and what I do. Um, I, I do ceramic and ceramics and woodwork and sewing and printing and you know, digital stuff, animation, all of those things. You won't be able to read that, I realised, but that's okay. You don't want to read that. It's boring. It's what I've just said. <laughs> but I'll show you some pictures. This is um, from a show that I created with my now husband, but at the time we just kind of started working together. Um, this is my work from the show, which is, like I said, I printed, I think I printed 30 metres of wood plank fabric from a drawing of mine, and I made it. <laughs> and inside the tent was a whole little projection of animated, growing, looping mushrooms, teeming and growing. And I also built the pots and, you know, sewed the flags and dyed the flags and I sort of have this thing of wanting to make and do everything and I think that comes from, like I said, growing up in the country with parents who made everything. <laughs> it just happens that way. Did you make your own row? I did make my own row. Yeah, see, I kind of annoy myself. <laughs> and you have to draw the line somewhere and say, okay, I'm not going to make that. I'm going to buy that. But, and, I, and I do have a short attention span, so I kind of don't want to be doing everything. I don't want to get caught up in projects where I end up making meters and meters of rope, but I do. And I end up wanting to weave tapestries, which is like the, you know, concentration span for that, but here I am, anyway. So this is my work in amongst all the other, other works in the show. Um, so I guess kind of inviting people. I love collaborating with people and I love working with people on projects and I have done that a lot. It's a really nice way to learn new skills <coughs> and learn them from the people that um, um, those flags appeared earlier in, um, on a boat in the Netherlands. I did an exhibition there on the canal, <laughs> which is um, just the end of a studio residency that I was doing there. So I thought I'd just show you that because it's on a boat in the Netherlands. <laughs> um, I think, I guess, my relevance for being here, I like. I don't know. Not very good. Good job. Thank you. Um, the show, I guess, I should talk about that's most relevant um, for what I'm doing here is Stitching Time. It was on at Art Victoria last year in October. Um, it's curated by Isabel Knowles and myself um, together. Um, we both are animators and we both have a really strong group of textile 
textile design and textile craft and textile work, art as well. And um, we wanted to kind of combine the two, animation and textile. And we wanted to kind of compare the similarities between them. And that idea that frame animation is made frame by frame and textile actually weaving stitch by stitch. It's a really kind of simple analogy, but it actually works well. And they do kind of work well together. And we were kind of uniquely involved in both. And I think that's kind of why we were quite excited about the possibilities of it. Um, so we asked a bunch of different textile artists to collaborate with different animators. And we kind of paired people up together, thinking of who they were and what they were interested in. Instigated this bunch of collaborations that were shown in Club Victoria last year. Um, we got funding from the Australian Council of Experimental Arts grant, with an um, experimental arts grant, so we were able to pay people to spend a bit of time making work, new works for sure. And um, so there was an interactive quilt, there was a, um, a three dimensional into the sculpture with animation, animated artists. There were um, quite a few screens with animations. There was a quilt that had animated panels in it. This is kind of, you can sort of imagine, but I'll show you before, which is, this is the quilt, which was a collaboration between Isabel Knowles and myself. Um, basically, we, using the conductive silver thread, so that when you touch the surface of the quilt, it triggers an animation. So you have to be touching my nerve. So that whenever you touch a certain stitch, a different animation will project onto the surface. So as you move the hand across it, um, different fluctuations of animations would appear. And so in that project, I hand stitched the quilt. We sourced this silver thread. I, I animated all the little bits and pieces that Appear, like all the crochet and the, the buttons in the center. I can show you that little animation as a singular thing here. But um, so that's a project that I found really exciting because interactive media is one of those things that I've always been excited by. But to make it work in that tactile, textile way, whilst also still being quite simple and exciting. Way. So that's an animation that I made, it's really simple buttons appearing and disappearing. <laughs> but I made it for the purpose of appearing on the quilt when you touch a certain part of it. So it's really nice thinking of that project as just a series of little things that can flower out of this surface. Um, what else have I got here to show you? Um, I just grabbed this. So what, I, um, what, what I'd like to do here, I always am interested in, I'm, in, I'm interested in finding ways to animate that doesn't genius on stone. And I'm interested in finding ways of showing animation in an art gallery that um, also addresses, I mean I'm really interested in actual things that you can hold as well. So I'm not just going to be showing the screen with my projection on the wall, I really want to have it alongside the actual object that gets me. I don't know, I'd like to see them together. So, um, for all this residency, I would really like to make some tapestries that can then be made into either tapestries that are on the wall, small ones, <laughs> and or um, sculptural things. I'm interested in weaving something that can be then made into a sculptural object. Um, that I could show alongside some animation. So I do want to make <coughs> big, colourful gradients, basically, is what I'm interested in doing. So I just did a few tests with photographs from the samples, sample drawers last week. Really shoddy animation, but just to give you a little bit of an idea of oh, this is me taking 10 minutes to photograph some amazing little samples, but still amazing works. And like just having a go at what you could make with that. Now it's a good work. <laughs> 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 
we based it on the film character, but we made a textile and like a big long piece of fabric that we printed with potato printing, a waning moon, so it's a moon of the moon going through all its phases. And we spun that on a special device that we built. <laughs> this is it. And it projected onto the wall through this animation. I am not quite describing that very well, <laughs> but maybe, um, maybe this video will show it a bit better. This is some of the, this is a little bit of the documentation for the That's the stars for you. This doesn't work for some reason. I just realized that this morning when I got it. I don't know if it gets from the cross side to the camera. I don't know why I think it's stopping. It's not stopping on the screen. It's, mm. it's, like it's a terrible on. day for technology. I'll just scroll through it and you'll be able to see. So this is the chainmail cardboard. And that's the style of the Is that right? That's a really and that, it's a very interesting thing. But then to see it in the space next to it as this obviously knitted piece of fabric, I think it's really nice seeing them together, and that's one thing I'm interested in. Um, this is the cat with eyes. I really didn't describe that very well, did I? Um, <laughs> oh. And then you can't properly see it because it's too light. But um, the actual moon <coughs> appears and goes through its phases. Again, uh, it's an annoying thing to make and work out how <laughs> to do, but um, we did. I don't know, I guess it's interesting working out how something will work making it, and I'll never ever want to make another thing like that again in the past. So, you know, but I'm glad I did it. <laughs> I think it's more about the um, process of learning it, learning enough to know that you don't want to do it again. <laughs> but, very excited about the um, possibilities of what the next project would be. This is our potato fruiting animation. <laughs> so that's a, um, we just shot that in between printing, so every time you load up the thing, you just take a photo. Just to show you how annoying um, that process was. So I think that's just like a, I make books that look good, and I don't make people look <laughs> make people spend time with the gallery, basically. And it was a really social show. I'm always interested in having things that people come in and make them alive. I want things to have a bit of presence and I want it to be more than just the survival of the wall that you walk past. I guess that's a big part of my practice too, is engaging people. That's why I love interactive things. But often people walk past them, like the tapestry at Craft Victoria, the theremin that you're weaving. People like the idea of interactivity, but how much they engage with it is... It can be hard to get people to pick something up. Mm -hmm. It can be hard to get people to do. So I'm always trying to I'll wear them away, it's a nice way to do it too, but um, it's really important part of practice, I guess. Um, so, I was delighted by the children sitting around the table eating peanuts and spreading shells everywhere, as opposed to, you know. Um, and I staged also, like, just getting the sculpture off the wall and making things with it in the space. I'm not precious about things at all. I like to see them used and I like to see them on the potential in them. And yeah, I carved my own drumsticks and we had we had music in the space <laughs> quite quickly. I made tambourines and drumsticks and I painted and carved the drum and all. the drum was the drum I found in my rubbish but I turned it into a carved and painted drum that they got played and now it's playing my hair. So <laughs> you know, it's it's funny. Um, 
I like things to have a history in my life. I don't like to be um, But I'm also just a nerdy sculptor slash drawer in the same way that. Um, and that's all from this show, and it's all on a blog, so I tried to get a little bit, I tried to document the changes and the, the way people use the space, and I did that by a blog. I've got a lot of blogs from different projects that I've done. I really, I really like documenting things being used and how they change. This is the blog for Stitching Time, which is the show um, at Kaifatoru. This is during our screen printing collaboration. We got a projector and started playing with projecting these things on the fabric when we were in this space. Isabella never screen printed before too, so she had a really great time learning that process. Mm -hmm. I, I, I obviously had a bit of experience with it. This is in Marion's women's studio in Montauk, Alabama. Okay. Penelope Dustin and Rebecca Hayes did an animation. Um, Penny did embroidery and they Rebecca kind of gradually picked it apart digitally and kind of made it a bit formal, if that makes sense. So they kind of put it together. Um, there's a star. That's mm -hmm. just a test of her um, shooting every stage. Um, this is just test. So we, we try to get a world to happen so that people can see the process and the progress. Kind of. So the, prog the process is really interesting to me. I want other people to be interested. Whether they are or not, I'm not sure, but I keep doing it. Um, so. Mm. Ask me any questions if you have any questions. Any questions for us? When's your next exhibition coming up? I actually don't have any at the moment. So I've got to make that. Well, yeah, I do have, I don't have time to make this up for me. But maybe it's still very much up. Taking up most of my time. But that will change next year. Hopefully next year. Um, I'm right. I'm starting to write the proposals for the show, so particularly excited about things that I can make. Here. But then I've got lots of plans, potential, <laughs> potential shows, but nothing's on. Yeah. So thank you, Dale. That's my